Howdy everyone. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the manager module. You've probably already heard of that before and most uh, likely you've heard of it from the overview video, but because there's a lot more to it, we're gonna jump in and take a closer look at the overall structure of how it works. And let's go take a look. All right, so let's start off with some of the core parts like the main section here on the left called the navigator. All the files on your computer or whatever's connected to your computer can be found here in this navigator. When you need to browse or search for folders or drives, you'll find them here in this PC. So when I open this PC, notice that we can see all the contents of my computer. For example, I can see that I have a memory card connected to my computer that I named Lumix. And when I open it, I can see all of its contents right here in the middle. If you want to save photos from a memory card to your computer, it's best to use the import function. Of course, you don't have to use this import function. You can always drag and drop the photos from your memory card like usual, but then you have to create a new folder, name it, etc. So importing actually helps a lot more by automatically sorting your photos based on basic information like the date it was taken, for example. And this is a great way to increase your workflow and organization at the same time. And speaking of organization, I definitely recommend using the catalog, which is here in the top left corner. If we add folders to the catalog, the photos we'll be working with will load much faster. And if we're going to be working with raw files, which I assume you will, these equate to large amounts of data. So you're going to save yourself a lot of time thanks to the preloading made possible by the catalog. All right, moving to the middle of the program. Uh, we've got thumbnails here for the photos uh, that we have from the folder that we've selected in the navigator. And you can also show a map in the browser by going here to see where the photo was taken. Of course, for this to work, we'll need to have the location added. And the location can either be automatically added by your camera or you can do it here in Zoner manually, which I'll show you in just a moment. Next, if I double click to open one of the photos, it'll enlarge it for a larger preview. And also below the film strip appears here at the bottom of the screen. And I can browse through the photos in the film strip to see them in a larger format here in the preview. Notice the button with an arrow that's all the way to the right over here on the top right. This will open what's called the viewer, and that allows us to see the photos across uh, the entire screen. And we can also access the viewer by hitting the F3 key. Now, Zoner Photo Studio X is full of keyboard shortcuts, and I really recommend that you use them. So learn them and use them. It'll save you a lot of time. You can also play slideshows in the viewer, adjust the slideshow settings, how long, for example, the intervals are between the photos and so forth. Another nice feature is that you can customize how the preview displays various information. Click here to completely customize the appearance of your previews. And let's not get bogged down by details right now or we're gonna have another hour long video. Moving on, if I turn off the viewer, I can still customize the appearance and settings for how and what information is displayed with the thumbnails in other parts of the manager module. If I switch to the browser, then here on the left, I have the option to change how thumbnails are displayed. And as I click through the various options, you can see how the appearance and the amount of information displayed with the thumbnails changes. You can easily set what information is displayed with the thumbnail options. I can continue to work with how the previews are displayed in a larger preview by clicking preview options and then set up preview information. We can completely change the preview settings with what information is displayed in this window and completely customize it. You can see what can be added, removed, how to change the background and other options. And of course, these are just some of the plethora of options we have at our disposal. Check out the new full view, which was recently added in the last update by clicking on this button here. And everything you'd want to know about the full view is going to be covered in another dedicated video, and you'll find a link to that in the description below this one that you're currently watching. Finally, let's take a look 
on the right side of the manager module where we can see all of the photos information. Here we can add the photos title, description, and keywords. And by the way, be sure to check out our keywords video. It's very useful because we explain how to use keywords and what they're good for. And you can also assign GPS coordinates, which I mentioned earlier, along with several other bits of information. And don't stress at all, these are just tools and assets you don't have to have everything filled in. It's up to you uh, what system or workflow suits you best. The main thing is, is that the program allows you to handle and play with your photos in a way that uh, suits you, allows you to work faster, and just enjoy the benefits of what the program can bring you. We can also add ratings by using stars or by adding a certain color, but again, we don't need to use them. If you do though, we can speed up this process again by using keyboard shortcuts. And in this case, it's going to be the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. So those number keys. And similarly, we can assign color labels by using basically the same style of keyboard shortcut, except we're going to be using uh, the key shift and then using those numbers I mentioned earlier. Or we can do things manually and add the ratings right here in the photo by just clicking the number of stars or choosing the color. And for example, adding ratings to your photos has the benefit of, for say, when we're searching for the best photos and say we use the five star allocation for that, then when we click on five stars in the search box right here, all of a sudden all of the photos with five stars will pop up and we can get right to posting them or whatever else that we wanted to do with them. If I go back to the right side panel, I have the export option here, which is an important function, but we'll talk more about that in its own video on this channel. And I definitely recommend watching that video because it goes into much more detail. And I probably don't need to explain the share button for sharing on social media. It's just that click on that right here and you can share photos directly from ZPSX to Facebook, Twitter, etc. Now below export, you also find very quick tools like those for rotating your image or the quick fix function. And last, but for sure not least, the batch filter, which comes in handy when you have say a lot of similar photos and you wanna do the exact same edit on them. Okay, so this is the manager module in a nutshell. Of course, there's a lot more to it that will be covered in separate other videos. But until then, give us a thumbs up if you like what you saw, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications every time we do create new videos as we will be continuously making them. And I hope to see you in the next video. Hope this was useful. Take care, enjoy your photography, and see you later.